COVID changed things massively and the investment market here in Liverpool has changed quite dramatically over the last couple of years. In the last 12 months or so, we have seen a marked difference in the number of investors that have been coming to our city to invest. 2017 was probably our peak and we had masses and masses of people. It's gone very, very quiet and I want you to be able to take advantage of that. So today's video is five of the top excuses that people give us for not investing here in Liverpool. And I want you to give you a different way of thinking about those excuses and think about how you can use those to your advantage. So at number five, we hear the same thing over and over again. Liverpool has become too expensive. Too expensive compared to what though? Okay, it's all about context. If you look at the data and look at the numbers, you will find that we are still an extremely affordable city. Probably places like the North East might be a little bit cheaper still, but Liverpool has a huge amount of growth still to happen. The development here, the regeneration here, there's still a massive space for growth. And I would argue that it's still a key city for lots and lots of reasons. We have the culture, we have the football clubs, we have people's just love for here in the northwest and we also have lots and lots of growth in the property market still our rents are still going up and yields are still okay they're not as healthy as they were back in 2016 and 17 granted but they are still very very healthy and if you are in this for the long term especially with the buy to let then you will still do incredibly well so my question to you is what does expensive mean is it a case that you actually need a little bit more money for your deposits more so than you were first anticipating and if that's the case go and find it the money exists here in our universe you just need to get your hands on it in some way so no Liverpool is not too expensive it's only expensive compared to what it used to be back in 2017 or so number four there's too much legislation in Liverpool, it's correct, we now have another selective licence scheme. Up in Sefton, in the north of Liverpool, we have the old selective licence scheme, which will be due for renewal later on this year as well. And so, yes, there is more legislation. We've got white papers going through Parliament, and it does feel at times that tenants seem to be in the driving seat a lot of the time. My argument back to that is that you need to be more professional in what you do. If you understand the legislation, there are always ways to mitigate any of those risks that you perceive. And so from a tenant's perspective, you know, if you look across our portfolio and the portfolio of all of our investors, I would argue that about 99.9% .9 of tenants are good human beings. They want to be good tenants. They want nice homes. They look after them. They pay their rent on time and they generally look after the properties pretty well. There's a rare occasion when things go wrong and that is when the legislation feels like it's going against us in some way. Selective licensing has been brought in as a way of trying to um, give more professional feel, I suppose, to the industry. And Liverpool City Council are working hard to try and meet their, meet their own regulations and kind of up the bar a little bit from their point of view to make sure that the homes that they're looking at and that do have these licences meet the requirements. And if you're a good landlord and you meet all of your compliance requirements, then you really shouldn't have anything to worry about at all. It's only the rogue landlords that should be scared. And so legislation is not an issue. In fact, if anything, people who are leaving the sector, those old school landlords who do not want to meet those requirements anymore, they are bringing opportunities to you because now there will be more stock available on the market once this licensing really starts to bed in. There were things like the tenant fee ban in the past. There's been loads of different changes with the Housing Act over the decades. And there's always a reason for people to exit that market. Your job is to get really, really familiar with the new regulations and make sure that you are using them to your advantage and making sure that you're a good landlord, a good human being, a good landlord and somebody who actually wants to invest in their assets because those assets are going to pay you back over time. Number three. We're waiting for a crash. <laughs> At the start of COVID in 2020, I heard this. Everyone was like, no, I am not investing. I'm just going to wait for the crash. And it didn't come. People said the same in 2021. People said the same in 2022. None of us can time this market. Absolutely, there will be fluctuations in the market. There will be corrections and there will be crashes over time. That is the peaks and troughs of the cycle, the 18 year cycle that people like to um, reference. But we can't time the market. And so your job is not to second guess when this will be, because I guarantee the property prices are only going to go up over the long term. And that's going to mean that you're not going to be able to 
enter into that market ever, if that's the case, if you're always sitting on the fence. What I prefer to do is think about what we call pound cost averaging. So if you are investing in a city or in the country, a few properties every single year, year on year on year, then across the whole portfolio, you will average out to have a good investment portfolio. Sometimes you'll buy at the peak of the market, sometimes you'll, you'll buy at exactly the right time in the market. You can't time this market, there's no way to do that. And so your job is to make sure that each individual property is cash flowing well, is looked after, is an asset that's valuable to you and gains in value over time. And you can do lots of things to help that, including things like refurbishment, making sure you've got the right tenants and using the right managing agents and systems and software and processes to really mitigate any of those risks and try to increase your profit line. Now, when people talk about this crash or this correction that's coming, I always wonder if they've got some kind of mystic, meg, psychic ball that they can see the future. Nine times out of 10, you will get it wrong. Anyone that's been trading on the stock market or looking at crypto, you know how this feels. You cannot time that market. So instead, jump in, do the best that you can with the information you have and the budget that you have, and then just keep going. Investing over a longer period, maybe over five, seven or 10 years, means that it will average out overall anyway. Number two, mortgage rates are too high. The APR on mortgages has gone much higher than they have been before, I grant you that. However, we've had it such, you know, at such low levels for such a long time. We've had it so good for such a long time that we just can't ever have anticipated that that was ever going to last. We knew that the rates were going to go up at some point and that's what they've started to do. There's been loads of fluctuations in the market, of course, particularly in 2022 because of all the changes with politics. And obviously the Bank of England was doing their very, very best to mitigate some of the inflation and various different factors that they had to work upon. That did mean that we had higher mortgage interest rates. But your job then is to find a deal that still works at those higher mortgage rates. What we have seen on the back of that is that obviously property prices have gone up and also rents have gone up as well. So sometimes when you crunch the numbers, although it initially feels quite difficult with rates of four, five or six percent APR, it's not actually always the worst case scenario. When you crunch those numbers and you see that rents have actually gone up quite a bit, it is working on the basis that these yields are still okay. As long as you've stress tested the property, as long as your mortgage lenders are happy to lend against it, as long as you are cash flowing a certain amount of money, then you will still do well. And don't forget, these are buy to lets, these are assets. You are putting a 25% deposit in generally, and that will stay in the property and the property will go up over time. So the mortgage APR will fluctuate and it will always go up time and time again. You'll be looking to refinance every two years, five years, 10 years, whatever. And the, the kind of the crux of this is that the value of the asset is always going up. If you take a fixed rate out, that will give you some security at the very least. And if there's ever a drop in figures, you can always refinance off to a better product or a different switch. The idea is that you acquire the asset today, you get the best asset at the best price on the best APR you can find. And then at some point in the future, you'll be able to refinance off that anyway. Just before the crash in kind of 2006, 2007, some of those mortgage interest rates were similar levels to they are now. Property prices were lower and they do feel a little bit higher now, but rents were also lower anyway. You have to see this as a business and you have to see it as a long term investment. Investment is quite different to income. Many of you guys have been thinking about trying to replace your day jobs, trying to replace your income with these um, with these buy to lets, but that's not what investment is. When you start to realize that investment is something to happen over the longer term and it will accumulate over time and actually become quite sexy in 10 years time, that's when you start to realize that you have to start setting the groundwork right now. You have to plant those seeds today. And the top number one reason that we hear for why people are not investing in Liverpool is there are not enough good deals. Really though? I'm still investing, our mastermind group is still investing, many of the investors I have one-to-one -one calls with are still investing. I would argue that you're not finding the right deals because of two reasons. Either one, you haven't put enough effort into finding those deals because they don't usually exist on right move. And second of all, you probably have misaligned expectations. Perhaps you were researching back in 2016, 17 or 18 when property prices were quite different and now you feel like the market is crap. You feel like the market is too expensive. You feel like you're not getting the best deals available.
I suggest that if you spent a bit more time doing some research and started to reach out and build your network and talking to people about off-market sales, you might find something of interest. There are plenty of sourcing agents out there. There are plenty of estate agents that do off-market sales. There's also plenty of letting agents who actually want to retain the management but still need to sell the property because their landlords are exiting. One thing I will say for 2023, I think you will see a lot more stock. We've struggled during COVID, the very beginning of lockdown, people were scared to sell their houses. People didn't want to allow access to people who were perfect strangers who might bring the virus into their house. And so we had a kind of a closed down market. We then saw that people were watching the house prices go up and up and up. So they were holding off thinking, if I just wait another three to six months, the prices will be higher again and I'll get more for my house. Forgetting that if they're selling a house and they want to buy another house, that one will have gone up in value too. So we've had a difficult two years, aside from the fact that investors have found it difficult to travel, aside from the fact that we've been massively short staffed across all the agencies and things because of the illness and the virus and things like that. I do think 2023, we're going to see more stock levels. We've got older landlords who are looking to exit that industry. We've got some fairly new landlords who aren't really professionals, who are just if they've just been having a bit of a dabble, they've got in at the wrong time, they've bought the wrong things and now they just want to exit that. We've also got some developers who got a little bit greedy too quickly and some of those companies are really starting to struggle and they're having to offload some of those assets to regain liquidity. And I want you to take advantage of this in 2023. There's a million reasons why people don't invest. That's not for you to use those excuses for yourselves. I want you to make sure that you are investing consciously, carefully and with great consideration for 2023. If you want help investing in Liverpool, I am the person to speak to. We do one-to-one -one calls, I've got a mastermind programme and we've got a variety of courses that you can just work through at your own pace as well. All of that is geared up to help you make the right choices for you for your investment strategy. So if you need me at all, you know where to find me. My contact details are below this video or reach out on any of the social platforms. See you soon.